we will be looking at a normal sinus rhythm and using our four-step method to analyze it and determine that it actually is a normal sinus rhythm. Step number one is right up here in the upper left hand corner. We're going to check and see if the rhythm is too fast or too slow. That means we'll be looking at the QRS's specifically how far apart each one is. It looks like we could pick any of these. They are all relatively the same distance apart. They look the same. They have the same shape, etc. Let's pick this one right here because it's actually on a big box line and count how far it is to the next one. If we use our 300 method, we would count one, two, three, a little bit more than three, but not four big boxes. Again, if we use the 300 method, that would be 300, 150, 100, 75. So it's between 75 and 100. It's much closer to 100. Let's just put this down at 92 beats per minute. 90, 95, somewhere along in there. 92 beats per minute. Step number two is to look at the width of the QRSs, and again, they are all relatively the same. So let's pick one, say, right about here. Let's pick this one right here. Starting right there and ending a little short of right there. Uh, so it looks like we're about right here and about right here. One, two and a half. Well, we have about two and a half boxes, two and a half small boxes, which is less than three small boxes. Each small box is worth 0 0.04 seconds. If we had three, we would have 0.12 seconds. That's our discriminating line, 0.12 or three small boxes. We have two and a half, so we're under two and a half. That would make our QRSs here narrow. What that means is we're following the Autobahn in the ventricles, which is a good thing. That's what we want. We're on the Autobahn. Now we're going to look at the P waves. And again, we'll just pick a few out. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. They all look the same. There is one in front of every QRS. What that means is that the sinus node is in charge. So we have a sinus rhythm. The sinus node is making a P wave up in the atria. We've already found out that the width of the QRSs is narrow. So that means after leaving the AV node, going down into the ventricles, the signal is following the autobahn. Everything's happening the way it should be. So this is a normal sinus rhythm. It would be sinus tachycardia if the QRSs were closer together, if they were over 100 beats per minute. That would be a sinus tachycardia. If they were less than 60 beats per minute, that would be a sinus bradycardia. We're in that happy zone between 60 and 100 beats per minute, so we are in a normal sinus rhythm.